A clinical trial was just published that tests cannabidiol for fibromyalgia chronic pain, and they found that placebo worked better than the cannabidiol at reducing pain. And that is a highly unexpected outcome. So we should look more closely at this study, especially because many of you may be considering trying cannabidiol or CBD for your pain, fatigue, and other chronic issues. All right, here's the paper. It just came out in, in the last week. It is called Cannabidiol versus Placebo in Patients with Fibromyalgia, a Randomized, Double-Blind, Placebo-Controlled, Parallel Group, Single Center Trial. And the study was conducted by a Danish group. Now, they conducted this study because there are a lot of anecdotal reports about cannabidiol, with some people saying that it worked wonders for them. I'm, I'm talking about things like kind of on YouTube or just reports uh, online in various um, venues. But despite those stories, and sometimes those stories can be compelling, we can't know for sure if the drug is actually helpful without running a properly designed and conducted clinical trial. So cannabidiol or CBD has a great deal of hype, um, but that hype is not scientifically justified. I think much of the interest comes from the fact that CBD is a component of the cannabis plant or, or marijuana, and cannabis has been demonstrated to help some people with chronic pain. But the THC, or the tetrahydrocannabinol in cannabis, is a psychoactive substance that has some undesirable effects as an analgesic or as a pain-relieving medication. And plus, it's still illegal in many places. So people naturally wonder if they can take CBD instead of the whole cannabis plant and get pain relief without the risk of impairment and reduced cognitive performance. And the idea makes sense, but there's basically no solid information in humans supporting that that idea is correct. And CBD works very differently in the brain than THC, so we can't assume that CBD is going to be beneficial for pain or other symptoms just because it comes from the cannabis plant. Also, I, I have to note that it, CBD, when it's taken with the whole cannabis plant, it will act very differently in our bodies than when it's isolated and given separately as its own treatment. Nature intended uh, for CBD to come together with other chemicals. That's its natural state. CBD is just one of hundreds of chemicals in the cannabis plant, and these chemicals can interact in the body. So there can be unintended effects when we take one of them and we pull them out and then we give them in isolation. So that's the idea. So this research team wanted to find out the truth. Is CBD something that's useful for chronic pain? A lot of people say it is, but we have to run the study to know for sure. Okay, so I'm not 100% sure that this article is open access and available to everyone, but I did put a link to the paper location in the video description. So give it a shot and see if you can access the paper. And let me give you some, some of my impressions and let me show you how I interpret the results. First, I'll say they used a very clean, traditional clinical trial design. Very straightforward, 100 individuals with fibromyalgia were randomly assigned to receive CBD 50 milligrams a day and 100 people received placebo, and they didn't know which one they were receiving. The participants took tablets for 24 weeks, so basically six months, which is a very nice duration to test the effects of the treatment. And they used gold standard criteria for diagnosing fibromyalgia. They used good randomization methods. So Everything looks good. As far as I can see, they used a good source of the CBD. They tested each batch independently for purity, so did everything right there. 
and they used a titration schedule where people started with 10 milligrams a day and they titrated up to 50 milligrams a day. Uh, they have, as with most clinical trials, they had a few different outcomes, but the main outcome and the only one I'm going to discuss in this video is uh, pain intensity, which they're recording on a 0 to 10 scale, with 10 being the worst pain possible. So you're going to want, you're expecting to see that number being reduced if the treatment is successful. So the approach looks good to me. So what did they find? Well, um, as I mentioned, 200 people started the study, 100 CBD, 100 placebo. At the end of the study, about 15 people dropped out of each group, which is pr a pretty typical rate of dropout. Now, they did use everyone's data, even if those people didn't make it to the end of the protocol, and that's, that's um, best standard process for uh, looking at clinical trials. You don't want to throw away people's data just because they stopped halfway through. You, you get a better estimate of how well a treatment works or how well it doesn't work if you use all the data that you're able to collect. Uh, the overall sample has an average age of about 50 years old, and the sample was about 95% female. The groups were very similar in terms of the number and the severity of side effects. There's really nothing interesting that I could see here. So let's look into the main results. Here again is the pain severity over the course of the study. A lower line means less pain. Uh, we see that the two groups started at the same level of pain, which is great. That's what you want to see. That means they did a good job sending people into one group or the other. Uh, but after they started taking tablets, the two groups diverged in their pain severity. We see that by four weeks of taking tablets, the groups have diverged quite uh, a bit. And what is fascinating here is, as you can see, the placebo group, is the one that's reporting the greatest reduction of pain. And that is certainly not what you would hypothesize. We would hypothesize that the cabadena, or the CBD is going to reduce pain more than placebo. But that's not what's happening here. It's actually placebo working better than the CBD. Now, we see that effect at 12 weeks. We see it at 20 weeks. And it's most pronounced at the very end of the treatment at 24 weeks. Now we do see later that the two groups mostly converge again after the individuals have stopped taking tablets for 12 weeks. So they've almost gone back to baseline and that's not unusual. So anyway, overall, the, really the main takeaway here is the people in the placebo group had a greater reduction of their pain than the people in the CBD group. And something that's not shown here, more individuals in the placebo group had very good responses, so more than 50% pain reduction than those in the CBD group. So there are quite a few things to suggest that the placebo group actually benefited more than the CBD group. All right, so if you do not stare at clinical trials every day, you may not know how rare results like this is. I can't remember the last time a placebo did better than the treatment. Really, the only time I can think of where we see that is when there's a new experimental drug and it has a severe side effects like nausea, and it makes all the participants taking the real drug dislike it so much that they don't want to be in the study. That happens sometimes, but that wasn't the case in this study because the participants tolerated the treatment and the placebo just fine. So this one is really a head scratcher for me. Even if the CBD had no clinical benefit, it should have at least have done as good as the placebo. So what's going on? Um, truthfully, just to be honest with you, if, if someone in my lab came to me and I'd run this study and they came to me and said they just finished analyses, they're done, and they gave me these results, I would tell them they made a mistake. They accidentally switched the treatment and placebo code in the statistical program. And I would tell them to go back, find the mistake, rerun the analyses, and then tell me what happened. And I say that because I have caught group switching 
your placebo and your treatment group switching in, their codes in the statistical programs. I've caught that multiple times in my career, probably four or five times, uh, where I could just tell by looking at it that there was a mistake and things had been swapped. It's really easy to do because groups are defined as just zero and one in the statistical programs, and things can get swapped as they move from one program to another, or maybe there's a miscommunication between the team members or uh, some abnormality with how the statistical program handles the data and how it handles plus versus minus symbols. It happens. But I am certain what I just described to you was the first response of this research team. And I am certain they went through everything to check that and they verified the results and they concluded that these results, as strange as they are, they're not due to error. So I'm having a difficult time comprehending what could be happening here. The best explanation I can think of, the, I guess the best potential explanation, this is a hypothesis, is that CBD is actually interfering with the placebo effect somehow. Now we know that the endocannabinoid system is involved in the neurological processes that are underlying the placebo response. And CBD may be blocking part of that system. Now, that's a fascinating possibility. It's one I've never heard of before. Um, but I do want to mention that when I got to the discussion of the paper, I saw that the authors thought of the exact same thing. They proposed that CBD may be blocking the dopamine receptors that are involved in placebo. And that's an interesting hypothesis. But this is all speculation. And uh, we would have to do more research to see if that's actually occurring. Regardless, the take-home message and what's important for you is the same. CBD does not look effective at reducing fibromyalgia pain in the overall patient population. Now, there are a few important caveats I have to mention. One, we don't know really how men with fibromyalgia respond to CBD. It could be different. Two, they only tested 50 milligrams a day. And while it's clear that didn't help, it's possible that a higher or a lower dose would work better. Most drugs, there's a dose response relationship you have to consider. But I will say that the limited literature does not suggest that going higher or lower is going to help much. And so I'm going to guess that's not the case here, but it is always a possibility. Then uh, third, the sourcing of the CBD could matter. As far as I can tell, the group used a very high quality extract from the cannabis plant itself rather than a synthetic CBD product. So I don't see how other products would work better than this one, but sourcing is always a big deal when you're looking at um, uh, treatments that come from natural products. Um, also, I have to mention that the sample is, I'm assuming, mostly Danish, and it's possible that individuals with genetics from other ethnic and racial groups would respond differently to CBD. Now, could you get benefit from this? Absolutely. Anything can happen on the individual level. But the research that we're seeing right here suggests that most people with fibromyalgia will not respond to CBD. So your likelihood of getting benefit from CBD is pretty low, and you have to take that into consideration before trying the treatment. Um, this does not mean that CBT is devoid of any clinical utility. Other studies have shown that it has interesting anti-inflammatory effects, and that might help certain chronic conditions, and those studies are underway. This study is only about specific use of CBD for fibromyalgia pain. So that's it. Uh, this is a classic example of why we need science and why we need clinical trials. This is why we spend the time and money to run clinical trials, because humans are really bad at guessing what will and won't work for medical conditions. And these studies allow us to strip away all the hype and the expectation and really gauge the, the true physiologic effects of the proposed treatment, and it allows us to get at 
the truth. Now, if you have any other thoughts about what these results mean, I welcome your ideas in the comments. That is the update for this week, and I will be back soon with another one.